Uh, we're in the intermediate rainfall zone. It's uh, this is the I think this is Davenport right here. Uh, we farm in this area right in here. We're looking at anywhere from 11 to 18 inches of rainfall depending on the year. We're getting close to the mountains in the backside, so we're fortunate to pick up some pretty good rain. Um, so anyway, that's our production area, silt loam soils, um, pHs running anywhere from six down to the mid fives. Uh, we are uh, fortunate in that we get pretty cool uh, evenings up here. We don't push a lot of heat units in the summer and that has made uh, production good. We're a lot later than these other two uh, fellows in their intermediate rainfall zone because we are up, uh, let's see, this is Spokane right here, so it just gives you an idea of kind of what we're facing. Uh, the seed bed preparation is chem follow. I'm just going to talk about our winter canola production. Um, we do nothing to after we harvest. Uh, we try to harvest at about a uh, six to eight inch stubble height. Uh, these, this is the stubble you see standing in here. Uh, this was seeded this fall. Um, we use only glyphosate in our uh, uh, burn down of weeds. Uh, one time we were using a little 2,4-D in there. And Curtis Hennings told us that was a no-no, and it probably is, probably affected our germination. Um, one of the things I'd like to comment on is I have the biggest stand establishment problems that we do be on the borders and we have to watch those carefully and a lot of times we'll be treating edges and stuff in a crop before that and all of a sudden you see no canola on the border so something to really watch what chemistry you use around there in the years before it. Um, this is interesting last year um, we had some skips and we think the drill was kind of bridging here uh, so we'll, we'll have to watch that a little bit. All, you're always learning so anyway, the seed bed preparation is basically do nothing after harvest. We don't harrow, we don't, we don't do anything. We just leave the field lay and, and spray it. Um, oftentimes we go into, I don't know, either barley or spring wheat stuff. Um, we've been fertilizing uh, prior to seeding, but we haven't been putting on a lot. Um, uh, we tend to soil test and that usually tells us that we don't have quite enough, uh, but we don't put our whole package on. Uh, we do about 50 pounds and we add some sulfur. Um, a long time ago I got this wild hair that I wanted to do less disturbance in fertilizing in the fall. And um, this, this rig sat around quite a while until we started growing winter canola again. And I've heard Curtis has set one up and other people are doing it. But this is just an old John Deere 1600 chisel frame with Yetter fertilizer <coughs> holders put on. And you can't see them very well, but it's just a, a nozzle that puts a jet down in the slot made by the colders. And we do that because our drill is not set up yet to put fertilizer in between the rows. So that's what we use. It's a 40 foot. And you'll see this picture again in a minute. Uh, but that's how we fertilize before we plant. Um, uh, Mike brought up some interesting points that we're going to have to think about, Mike. You know, whether we're putting too much on. We had a neighbor this fall, Tom Swites, I think he spoke a couple years ago, and Tom basically did not fertilize. He seeded and he went in, when did he go in, Todd? October. In October. So we're all trying things. Uh, by the way, uh, Todd Carson uh, and I farm together and uh, Jason Echobar is here, and where's Jim? And there's Jim. And all of us kind of, kind of look at each other and <laughs> compare notes and do one, uh, different things. Uh, this is the drill we use. Um, it's a uh, 1850 John Deere on an air cart, and hooray for air carts! Uh, I like your description of the 150s and being able to set them. <laughs> we used to use a. a, a the 750 that had the same opener and you get what you get <laughs> when you try to set seed rate it's it's hard anyway what we do is we bought uh, we uh, 
we lock up the front openers and seat on 15 inch spacing and that's what had seated that other field and uh, then we also block uh, go in the towers and just plug the the front uh, uh, feed tubes so we don't get anything there and um, we have been seeding around the 10th of uh, August just before our harvest now uh, got to kick out what you two were saying um, what Jim and Jason, what was it, two years ago or three years ago that there was a lot of early seeding and what happened? I think it was three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. And there was from what, June and even May? Yeah, I didn't see the May, I didn't see the June. June, yeah. And uh, that didn't work very well in our area. And I don't know, you guys got a theory? Mike got me all stirred up. We will blame you, Mike. And that's the rest of the story. In our area, when we first started trying this, we'd plant the first of September. Guess what? We got a frost just about when we had two cotyledons there, and boom, the crop was gone. So we have to get it established before we get that that cold air settling in some night during harvest or something. So that's why we're kind of sticking to that that around the 10th of August. Uh, that's our preferred date, I think. Uh, uh, now, uh, I want to mention something that, that Jason tried last year. He, uh, what we have trouble getting an establishment, just like Mike was talking about, in you, it's getting a stand. And we have trouble on our clay knobs getting stands. He went out, when was it, Jason? July when there was that moisture on those clay knobs and he seeded and how'd it work? It worked excellent. It, it went into drought dormancy during our late during harvest time, but it revived itself this fall. So, so there's another idea that we may go out and hit some of those clay knobs early, then seed the rest of the field. And with these drills, you seed right through and you don't do much damage. Uh, we uh, we actually, yeah, I mean, just, just the way it works. We've been using, the varieties Mike's been using, Athena and what was the other one? Amanda. 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 Amanda, yeah. And the drill is an 1850 John Deere single disc opener. We do have, you, they're hard to see in this photos, but we do have residue managers on the front of those, uh, which help a little, I don't know. Great, started at four. Last year, this is the first year we'd ever done something with the cart and uh, we got eight pounds on and uh, Todd and I can attest that as we were going through that part of the field we thought we saw a yield drop um, so you can get too much on this year we went three five we may go to three next year just like you guys are seeing we we've got to fine-tune that and uh, go from there Um, this seal, uh, this field, uh, about half of it was reseeded and it was the highest yielding field. And I just wanted to point out, we'll go in in the spring on those clay knobs. Uh, for example, on, on these over in here, there was a lot of no-show in the way of plants uh, last summer. And we went in and reseeded this spring and uh, uh, it did a nice job. It leaves what's there, but gets the seed in and uh, uh, we get uh, pretty good, pretty good stand. Uh, after doing it, try it twice. My only complaint is we, we've been using non, non Roundup Ready and we can't find a non Roundup uh, spring canola. Um, then in the spring, because our soil test in our area has shown that we have no, basically no residual fertilizer in the soil in the spring. Um, and uh, I got a kid, Rich, because I keep asking him, all those dead leaves, are they going to contribute that fertilizer back to that plant during the growing season? And he keeps using nebulous terms like it breaks down quickly. And that doesn't tell me how quickly, Rich. <laughs> yeah, not during growing season. Good. Yeah. So we go back out with our fertilizer colder, and because I'm cheap, I use aqua, <laughs> not 32. And we fertilize right through that stand in the spring and have seen no damage other than when we lift out and don't turn our, our uh, jet off. 
and then we burn the, the, what leaves are there off. So um, we, we do this twice. Uh, but that has seemed to work very well. My theory that aqua is getting down in the soil where in our area I think we need to have it so that it's ready for the plant like Mike says, that it's readily available during that period when it's, when it's most needed. So that's why we do it. And again, we can't get in as early as you folks. We, we are looking at doing that, oh, uh, right around the 1st of April, if we're fortunate, and maybe a little later than that. Um, we have the same weeds at all, and insects that the rest of you talked about. Um, aphid, uh, we usually spray once a season, but you know, I've never looked in the fall. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Jason? <laughs> Jim, have you ever seen much of a problem? Yeah. So, <laughs> now you got me worried. I'm going to go look next fall. But this is what the stand looks like in the fall, and like I mentioned in my morning talk, uh, boy, it's effective weed control. Uh, really, really good. And the last comment I would make is uh, that these new combines and these new headers have made a world of difference in as far as, as uh, uh, cutting the crop. And, and, and I would tell you, just in my perspective, it's the size of that auger. That auger will swallow that 3,000 pound crop. Uh, our older headers would used to flip it up over the top and do all kinds of gyrations with it. This just sucks it right in and feeds it back through the combine. And uh, Todd's back there smiling. He knows that I can also take uh, too much green stubble and um, <laughs> it really stuffs it in. <laughs> yeah. I plug. Yeah. It, 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 uh, I did it twice. And, uh, what, are, what are your combine settings? Is it open the concave wide open? Oh, that wasn't where it plugged. It was green in the draws and, and it was uh, green stems and it plugged on the right at the rear. There's a there's kind of an accelerator back in there and it just wrapped <laughs> that tight. Until the rest of the Yeah, it, there's actually, luckily, there's a shut off and then that slows down and shuts the machine down. And if it wasn't, you'd have a machine plug from front to rear. And that would really not be fun. But anyway, that I just wanted to comment that, that, that the air drill and, and the newer headers have really made a, a big difference, in my opinion. Full-fingered auger. Yes, full-fingered auger. There's the other key. And by the way, that, this is not a picture of cutting canola. As you can see, that's not very black. <laughs> or either that or we got the machine shut, set really bad. <laughs> Pretty tight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you.